Okay guys, today we're gonna to talk about fission and fusion. So fission, the definition for that is when a heavier nuclei or heavier nuclei split apart to form lighter nuclei. An example of that would be uranium down here and it captures a neutron and it splits into two smaller uh, elements, barium and krypton. Fission occurs in nuclear power plants and nuclear bombs. Fission undergoes a chain reaction, uh, which means that the neutrons that are produced from one reaction can hit other isotopes to start a new fission reaction. So here's an example that we just gave. This neutron right here is captured by a uranium-235. It becomes very unstable and it will split off into two other smaller elements, a barium-141 and a krypton-92 isotope, and it will give off three neutrons. Those three neutrons will then hit three different uranium-235s, and those three uranium-235s will capture those neutrons and then split off into three additional bariums and three additional kryptons, and each will give off another three neutrons, which will be a total of nine neutrons. And as you can see, this is a chain reaction. It just keeps getting more and more and more neutrons are given off and uh, faster and faster that uranium will start splitting. So in a nuclear power plant, <clears throat> we're going to talk about this and the, um, the different pieces of it because you need to know it. The containment structure here has thick layers of concrete and steel to prevent radiation leakage. That's the last thing we want, are a bunch of gamma rays coming around and hitting us and deforming our uh, DNA. Then we have our control rods. They control the rate of reaction and they can be used to, sh to shut down the, re the reaction or slow it down. The reactor is where the nuclear reaction takes place and contains the control rods. The steam generator, here is D. Nuclear reactions produce a lot of heat energy and that heat energy is used to boil water and when it boils, it produces steam. And then the steam will turn this turbine here and the turbine will turn and it usually involves a magnetic coil and some uh, wire, usually uh, um, a conducting wire like copper or something. You'll learn more about this in physics next year. But when um, copper wire turns in a magnetic field or a magnetic field turns around a copper wire, it produces, produces an electric current or electricity, makes electrons move. And like I said, the fuel rods here are contained in the control rods and they contain uranium-235 and it fuels the fission reaction. The condenser sends cool water to the cooling tower and reactor and it's vital to keep the reactor from overheating because these, uh, the fission produces a lot of heat and sometimes it may produce too much if you're not controlling those control rods very well and you don't want it to overheat. A nuclear reactor is self-sustaining due to that chain reaction that we just talked about. The neutrons that are produced from one reaction with uranium-235 cause a new fission reaction or three new fission reactions to occur. The pros to nuclear power is that there, are, there is no air pollution like in uh, carbon fuels, fossil fuels. There are no greenhouse gas emissions, so there, there's no CO2 given off or any other compounds that causes greenhouse gas. And gas. The fuel cost is low because very little is needed and it can be done at room temperature. Cons, it is very expensive to build and to maintain. You have the risk of an accident because if a nuclear power plant fails, people can die very quickly and there are people that can die very slowly, painfully. Security, uranium-235 can be used for making atomic bombs. Thermal pollution, so thermal means heat. It causes warm water in streams and rivers because there's a lot of heat given off. And then the, there's the disposal of the nuclear waste. It has to be buried for possibly thousands of years because the waste that is given off after uranium goes down till it's stable, it takes a while to do that. It's not immediate. The nuclear reactions are not immediate. 
If you look at your nuclear decay on your notes, this takes a while to do. Now let's talk about fusion. That is when light nuclei fuse together to form heavier nuclei. And if you look here, it's usually a deuterium, two hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium. They form together, they bond. It requires a lot of heat in order to do that. But once it's done, it becomes very unstable because it has three protons and it only needs two. So it will undergo nuclear decay and that extra neutron is given off and a lot of energy, a lot of energy is uh, given off for that. It requires a lot of heat energy to get it started, but once you got it started, it gives off a significant amount more of uh, energy. This type of reaction occurs in the sun and other stars, and we have reproduced it on the hydrogen bomb. Now, uh, I had just said that it requires a lot of heat energy to get it started, and you're probably thinking, well, where do we get all this heat energy? Well, actually, in a hydrogen bomb, what they do is they start off with a fission reaction. Uh, they'll start out with a small amount of uranium-235, and they'll bombard it with neutrons, and it will uh, decay into barium and krypton and then give off three other neutrons and give off some energy and then that is a chain reaction and then very very quickly it produces a lot a lot of energy and therefore it can get really really hot and they contain this in a very very small area relatively small so it gets extremely hot and then when it does that that gives off enough energy to fuel the deuterium and the tritium to start combining and then once that happens, it gives off a tremendous amount of energy. An example of a fusion reaction, like I just said, is the deuterium plus the tritium will make a helium atom and one neutron and a lot of energy. So some pros of fusion. It produces more energy per gram of fuel than fission, a lot more. It produces much less nuclear waste than fission because what you're given off is simply a proton, I'm sorry, what you're given off is simply a neutron and a helium. Uh, fusion fuel is easy to get because heavy hydrogen is found in water. The cons, it does not sustain a chain reaction. Okay, so the neutron that's produced isn't going into another uh, tritium and deuterium to, to keep it going. Basically, it's the heat that you need to keep it going. It requires an extremely high temperature to get it started and pressure. Uh, we're talking about 10 to the 8th to 10 to the 9th degrees Celsius. And that's pretty dadgum hot. Um, we don't have the technology right now to efficiently harness the energy produced and we can't contain it once it starts it starts it's hard to get it to stop because it produces so much heat it will uh, continue to go until it runs out of fuel which would be the deuterium and tritium thanks for watching guys